Despite being around for almost four decades now and having an incredibly good premise for a video game, the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series hasn't seen many games adapting its story. Most of you are probably familiar with the 2013 game All-Star Battle and its 2022 re-release All-Star Battle R, which is a really good and fun fighting game especially if you're a fan of the series. There's also Eyes of Heaven which is also a fighting game that exists? Older fans may remember the Capcom 2D arcade fighting game, JoJo's Venture, or Heritage for the Future depending on which one of the many versions you've played. It's a quite highly regarded game, made in the prime years of Capcom where they put out some amazing fighting games. But did you know there's another JoJo game made by Capcom? After the success of their 2D fighting game, there was no other option than to make another action-adventure game? GOGO's Bizarre Adventure or JoJo no Kimyo na Boken Ogon no Kaze released on the 25th of July 2002 for the PlayStation 2. Developed and published by Capcom is an action-adventure game based on the fifth part of Hirohiko Araki's classic manga series JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Golden Wind. This game shares a lot of similarities with my previous video actually. It is a game based on an anime, or manga in this case, as it precedes the anime by many years, that tries to recreate the plot to the best of its abilities and was never released outside of Japan. Although this is much more of a fighting game than the Evangelion game. Unlike Ava 64 however, this one has a few fan translations available, which I'll be using to play for this game. Now, why the hell did I call it Geo Geo's Bizarre Adventure? Well, that title came from the Jojo author himself, Araki. The game was actually very close to releasing in North America and Europe. It was even shown at several expos in 2002, such as E3. Apparently, the spelling of Jojo for this game was a request by Araki for the Western versions of the game, who wanted the title to be more Italian to fit with the theme of the story and the main character, Giorno Giovanna. I mean, it makes sense, as that is how the character's name is spelled, but I guess with how popular the anime has become, they chose to keep the title consistent when they got to that part of the anime. Besides, I don't think Giorno ever even gets called Jojo anyway. Back to the game, as this certainly is one. It consists of an abridged version of the part 5 story with small changes to condense the plot as it does skip several fights from the manga. It's divided into stages, presenting you with fully voiced cutscenes or these comic book panel style stills, which lead into a battle against an enemy stand or its user. As I'll be going for the whole game, do expect spoilers for part 5 obviously, but I won't really be mentioning any other JoJo part if there are some still that you haven't watched or read. Most of the time you have to defeat the opponent by just depleting their health bar, but some stages will task you with surviving a timer or getting to a specific location. What makes this game interesting are the special factors you can trigger by performing specific actions that mimic what happened in the manga. Performing them will increase your health and stand bar, as well as healing you a little. Most stages have four different ones you can perform, but some will have less or trigger automatically. It becomes almost a puzzle game in that aspect, with you trying to figure out how to trigger them. Though, even after knowing how to trigger some of them, I still had issues. Overall, they are important though, and useful in getting through this game. The controls in this game are fairly simple, and the gameplay is akin to an arena fighter. You move around with the D-pad or analog stick, Square does your normal attack combo. If you press it while running, you do a dash attack that usually knocks the enemy down. You can do a dodge roll with circle. If you press it as you hit the floor, you will be able to get up quicker too. X and triangle perform special attacks which are different for each character. Most of these utilize their stands. R1 does a stand shot. It's another character specific attack that is stronger and usually involves the stand lunging forward. It can be charged up by holding R1 up to two times, making it even more powerful. And finally, L1 calls your stand. Whilst it is active, the stand bar above your health will deplete, but your R1, triangle and X attacks will all change. When not attacking, your stand will also automatically block any hits when active, otherwise you will have to dodge with circle. Having your stand be hit will deplete the bar faster, and if it empties completely, you will not be able to call the stand until it fully refills. This is known as a stand crush. It also means you will not be able to use the R1, triangle and X abilities if they are tied to your stand. If you deactivate the stand early, you won't need to wait for the bar to fully refill, which you can tell by the color of the stand bar. I'll go into more detail about what each character's moveset is as they appear, but to keep this part from being any longer, let's actually start playing the game. We start with a very quick recap of Jojo parts 1 for 4. Not that it matters too much as part 5 is fairly self-contained, even more than the other parts. Only one character from a different part appears in this game, as we skip over the Koichi at the airport section and go straight into Giorno accidentally being around Felikiai Luka's death, which leads us into the first proper cutscene of the game with Bucciolati hitting Giorno up. Nowadays, with part 5 of the anime having been out for several years, it can be hard to appreciate, but this was the first time people got to see part 5 in full color and motion like that. So, despite it being a little underwhelming even for the PlayStation 2, I can still appreciate the graphics of this game. And I always much prefer Giorno in blue. Anyway, Bucciolati licks our face, doesn't even buy us dinner, and after accusing Giorno of killing Luca, we start the first stage of the game. You get a little tutorial going over some of the buttons in the game. I'll go over Giorno's moves in more detail in the next stage as we'll get a better view. So let's talk more about the secret factors. 
This stage has four secret factors. The first one you get by using your R1 stand shot on Buchalati, which triggers the iconic scene of Golden Experience's slow motion punch. The numbers signify how much the health and stand bars increase by, up to 10, which is max. This secret factor was War 4, so our bar increased by 40% and we will receive 40 points at the end of the battle. You can get another secret factor by using your stand shot on the fire extinguisher to turn it into a snake that will go after Buchalati. Note that you want to press R1 while your stand is off. If you have your stand on, you will automatically face the enemy and attack them instead. You can also tell by the color of the heart by the stand bar. If it's pink, your stand is on. The third secret factor is triggered by using a stand shot on Buchalati while between the seats. And for the fourth one, you need to stand shoot Buchalati's stand, Sticky Fingers itself. This one is the trickiest to pop because it won't trigger if the other stand blocks it. There are times you will have to do certain secret factors in order or you can miss out on some if you're doing it the wrong way. But thankfully, this isn't the case yet. Overall, this is a pretty nice and simple tutorial level to get used to the controls and the secret factor mechanics. We have a little chat with Buchalati who runs away terrified from this actual 15 year old child and onto stage 1-2. As we approach Buchalati, he hides in a zipper and teleports to a different location. You also have a 5 minute time limit, so this is a perfect time to go over Giorno's moves. With a standoff, square is your basic attack combo, X uses golden experience to punch the floor, which also creates a tree that can get enemies stuck on it for a short while. Triangle creates a little ladybug which flies around the enemy, not sure if it has much use besides finding the opponent, but you can already do that by turning on your stand. R1 shoots out your stand forward, and when fully charged up it also spawns a tree which the enemy gets stuck on. With your stand on, Square now attacks with golden experience, X creates a vine on the floor which can grab onto enemies and get them stuck. It's better than the tree because you can actually reach them. Triangle creates a frog which Giorno attaches to himself, which can be used to nullify a hit. If the frog isn't hit, it will hop off after a short while and jump around the stage. R1 with the stand on does the classic stand rush which just gets longer with each charge. You can move around as Giorno while the stand is attacking, so you can just walk up to an enemy and throw in some extra hits yourself. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the mission. The stage is not that big, so it's not hard to find Buchalati by yourself, but you can just turn on the stand to make Jono face his direction, then run to him. By the way, you can get an easy secret factor by using your stand shot on any object that can turn into an animal here. When approached, Buchalati will run around aimlessly for a little, then go to one of the predetermined zipper locations to teleport again. Here the game is trying to get you used to fighting more mobile enemies, so you just have to catch up to him and hit him a few times before a cutscene plays where Buchalati hides inside one of the people on the stage, and you have to find him. Before that, you can get a second secret factor by stand shooting the tooth that spawns near you after the cutscene. This will turn the tooth into a fly which will help you identify Buchalati, but you don't actually want to find him just yet because you get another secret factor by using your stand shot on one of the other people. If you find Buchalati before hitting them, you lose the chance to get it. The last secret factor is for using a stand shot on the person Buchalati is hiding inside. It's always the guy with a hat. The timer stops and Buchalati decides to fight back. Now it's a proper battle. It's a great time to get used to dodging attacks and counter-attacking. Keep in mind, you are able to charge your R1 shot whilst walking and dodging, which often makes it the best option in battle, rendering a lot of the other moves kind of useless. Also, another big enemy you will face in these battles is the camera. You have no control over it and the enemies can go out of its range very easily. Anyway, we beat up Buchalati again, then Giorno tells him his grand plan of stopping Mafia from selling drugs by becoming a level 100 Mafia boss himself. On to stage 2-1. I really like the map of Italy with all the locations you get to visit marked that gets shown whenever you start a new chapter. This time, Giorno visits Polpo in jail in order to get accepted into the gang. He gets tasked with keeping the ladder lit for 24 hours, but oopsie, the lost Mario brother dumps a bucket on us, extinguishing the flame. No worries though, he relights it easily, but that summons a stand that eats him out of existence. Our next battle is against Black Sabbath. As you can see, he is constrained to the shadows, but can launch forward if you get near to grab you for an attack. You have to wiggle your stick to break free from him. You can pretty easily bait an attack, then use your own which will give you a secret factor. Black Sabbath later starts using the bird's shadows to move around too. Be careful and dodge whenever you see one coming after you. Doing so will net you a second secret factor. Hitting him in that way pushes him into the sun, which will also deal extra damage, as well as unlock yet another secret factor. The last one is unlocked by stand shooting one of the pillars. Doing it too early in the stage won't count though. Once you figure out the trick with the shadows, this is a very simple fight. Before moving on, I want to mention the scoring system that is in this game. After each stage you receive a rank and points based on your performance. The rank doesn't matter that much, but the points do add up to unlock extras in the game, which I'll cover at the end. Each stage is worth 200 points, 100 for discovering all the secret factors and 100 for your remaining health at the end of the mission. To get all points for completion, you don't actually need to have 100 in both at the same time, which makes things a little easier. Originally, I did want to complete this game 100%, however, while it's all nice and fun now, the difficulty ramps up quite quickly, and not in a good way. 
Also, there is a lot more to getting all the points in the game than just this. I do like the idea of it however, but they want you to work really hard if you want to fully complete the game. Anyway, after beating Black Sabbath, we return to Popo with our lit lighter and get accepted into the gang. Stage 3. This is where the plot starts to deviate a little to speed things up. Immediately after Jorno gets introduced to the gang, Michelotti gets his promotion and receives the mission to protect Trish, who is already here. It's a shame to see several fights skipped over like that, but we go straight to Narancia's fight with Formaggio and his stand Little Feet. As for his moveset, Narancia's triangle performs a kick, which you can follow up for extra hits. X shoots his stand Aerosmith out, shooting the ground. Your R1 also shoots out your stand forward, but further and performs a few direct shots while pushing the enemy back. Narancia's stand works a little differently from Giorno's, as it is a remote type, meaning you control the stand directly while Narancia is stationary. When using the stand, you will also have a radar that will show you living beings in the bottom right. Triangle makes Aerosmith dash forward, but it does no damage. You can also dodge with circle to do a loop. X drops a bomb and R1 does a similar dash to triangle, but if it connects, it unloads a barrage of bullets onto the enemy. Follow dub with a hit if charged up. This fight is not too bad. Formaggio can make himself smaller and run around the stage, even hiding inside rats, but he can still be damaged in that form. He can also make you smaller, where you'll have to dodge him for a little while before you return to normal size. For one of the secret factors, you'll actually want to get shrunk down by his stand and avoid all attacks to trigger it. Second secret factor can be triggered by stand shooting one of the rats that run around the stage. For the third, you want to pay attention to when Formaggio strings down. Sometimes when he hides behind one of the items, a rat will pop out instead. Shoot that rat to get the secret factor and uncover Formaggio. The last secret factor you get by exploding one of the cars. Be careful not to be too close as touching the car even after it explodes with either Narancha or Aerosmith will deal damage to you. This one I had some issues triggering, I found that it's better to do it later in the stage after unlocking other secret factors first, despite no guide mentioning it. Besides that, we beat him quite easily and move on to Pompeii in order to find some sort of a key when we are attacked by Iluso and his stand Man in the Mirror. Fugo gets thrown into the mirror world and you are tasked with surviving for 2 minutes. What makes this more difficult is that your left and right controls are flipped, making it more confusing than if they just flipped both the axes. I won't go into Fugo's attack just yet as you don't have your stand available in this mission, meaning you can't even block attacks. Trying to activate it is how you unlock the first secret factor though. The other three are unlocked by walking next to one of the mirrors, one of the broken mirrors and lastly one of the bins. This mission is where I knew I would not be 100% in the game. I barely made it through so I cannot imagine trying to do this whole thing with full health. You can of course use the secret factors to strategically heal up, so it's not like you need to be perfect, but I still struggle. Mainly because of the flipped controls. I played this whole game on normal, so maybe easy mode is a little more forgiving, but this is definitely a challenge for someone much more masochistic than me. After running around for 2 minutes we proceed to the next section where Abakio is now stuck in the mirror world. This time you do actually get to fight though, but thankfully you don't have to completely beat the enemy, only get rid of the lighter part of the health bar. This battle takes place across the mirror world and the real world, with Abakio being stuck in the mirror world and his stand in the real world. Iluzo will occasionally swap between the worlds, so you need to use your stand accordingly. You'll start with all the secret factors, which is nice since you get a full stand bar from the start, but that also means you can't get the heals that come with unlocking them. This is unfortunately Abakio's one and only mission in the story. Yeah, even Fugo gets more. To make it easier for me to show and explain his moveset, we'll briefly teleport to a different imaginary land where we fight Bucciolati as I cannot stand the flip controls and by being separated from your stand, you can't really fully utilize them. First of all, his square only does one hit. Your X does a kick, which can be pressed again to do another kick that makes the enemy fall to the ground. Your R1 is a strong punch done by Moody Blues. And lastly, Triangle starts the countdown, which gets cancelled upon pressing Triangle again or getting hit. Your actions during this time get recorded and can be played back by Moody Blues by pressing Triangle with your stand activated. Pressing X with your stand active grabs the enemy after which you can perform a few punches, but they can't break out of the grab before that. Pressing R1 with the stand active will detach Moody Blues from Abakio, making it go directly after the enemy, mimicking every punch and dodge you perform. Back to the actual stage. It is a big shame that his only proper fight is one that you don't get to even properly use him and have to suffer for the flip controls. Thankfully, your stand controls are normal, so it is a lot easier to deal damage in the real world. After some struggle, we manage to get him down in health low enough which leads us to the last part of the Man in the Mirror fight, where we combine Fugo's first fight with the switching between the real and the mirror world of this one. Once again, we'll bring our body Bucciolati to go over Fugo's moveset, even though we'll never get to play as him again. With the stand off, you can press X to punch the floor which creates poisonous smoke that damages the enemy. Pressing triangle gives Fugo some sort of an aneurysm. I don't believe it does anything. R1 sends out his stand, Purple Haze, which walks forward and will punch anything in the way. 
His stand is also remote type, so activating it will make Fugo stand still whilst you control Purple Haze directly. You have 6 capsules, which some of your moves will use up, indicated by the green circles in the bottom right. By pressing triangle, you can do an attack that creates a small cloud of poisonous smoke around you and refills all the capsules. X will throw out one of your capsules on the ground and R1 does a grab attack where Purple Haze punches the opponent. The amount of poison capsules it uses depends on the charge. Randomly, Purple Haze will also stop listening and just do his own thing. If that happens, you can withdraw your stand and summon it again to make it obey again. Overall, he's a pretty fun character but, again, done dirty by the mission not allowing you to properly utilize him. As for the mission itself, it's just as annoying as the previous two. Fighting with Fugo means you don't have a lot of combat options and your controls are flipped, whilst fighting as Purple Haze means you're stuck walking slowly or having the stand stop listening. As for the secret factors, there are only two. You get one automatically at the start of the stage and for the other, you need to finish the enemy with a fully powered level 3 stand shot. After a few tries, we finally make Iluzo retire, you know, Giorno discovers his stand apparently has a microbiology degree and without any issue he's able to extract the necessary antibodies from the snake to easily create a vaccine to Fugo's deadly stand. Yeah, anyway, let's move on to the next stage. A few cutscenes happen, but the team manages to get the key we were looking for and go on a train where we get into a fight with Prosciutto. Yet another playable character, Buccellati. With X, you can do an extended punch using sticky fingers. With R1, you can do a strong punch that does more hits when charged up. Triangle will let you zip around the stage very fast. You can even change directions mid-zip. With the stand on, the X button creates a zipper on the ground which can grab onto enemies and hold them still for a few seconds. Triangle button will now make you hide under the stage. You can hide longer by holding the button and even move around whilst on the ground. The R1 button does the classic stand rush attack. The mission itself is fairly standard, except Grateful's dead attacks will put the aging effect on you, which will continuously decrease your health. By going to the front of the car, you can stand shoot Pesci, who is lying on the ground to activate a secret factor, which points out the effect ice has on nullifying the aging effect. At the back of the car, you can hit the ice machine, which will drop cubes of ice. They will stop your health from dropping. You can get the machine to drop more ice as well if you need it later in the fight again. For the third secret factor, we need to stand shoot the wall at the front of the car to create an opening for which we want to push Prosciutto for the final secret factor and an early end to the level. You can beat him normally, but it's a lot quicker this way, though you will need a charged up shot to push him with enough force. After that, we get to the second fight with Pesci, which actually is a lot easier. He'll start by hooking onto you with his fishing rod, button mash and keep the stick away from where he's pulling to escape it. Doing it successfully will net you an early secret factor. Unlike other fights where you'll usually dodge to the side to avoid attacks, you'll want to dodge towards Pesci to avoid most of his attacks. Another secret factor can be gotten by stand shooting Pesci. For the third, you'll need Prosciutto, who is chilling by the train, to use his stand ability. Just stand shoot him when he does. Lastly, you'll want to finish off Pesci with a fully powered stand shot, with the stand on, for the Arrivederci goodness and the final secret factor. Now for my least favorite stage in the entire game, 6-1. We have yet another new character, but this stage is also a little special, as once again you have to survive for 2 minutes. Now on a moving car with Ghiaccio chasing after you trying to ram the car. Nisto doesn't have a melee, kinda. So his square just does a quick shot. With the stand on, those shots also sent out one of your stand bullets if available, which, if out, can ricochet other bullets if certain attacks are used. Mista has a bullet and a stand bullet indicator in the bottom right. The stand bullets will return to you after a short time and the normal bullets can be recharged with triangle. With the stand buff on and off, trying to shoot without bullets will also make you reload. I do like how Mista makes a comment whenever you have 4 bullets remaining. Pressing X will do a straight shot. If you have stand bullets available, they will add themselves to the shot when the button is held down. You can also rotate while aiming. With the stand out, your X will do a ricochet shot provided you have the stand bullets available. You can charge this attack too. The R1 button, I'm not fully sure on, it does a straight shot that sends out stand bullets with it, but sometimes it does a shot that gets split into two, which often just means both shots miss completely. With the stand on, the R1 shots get a homing effect applied to them and can also send out stand bullets. It's a bit hard to describe but pretty much most of his moves boil down to gun. Now back to the mission. Did I mention I hate this stage? This is where I was certain that I will never be able to get full score on every stage. Because this is some bullshit. Before I get more into that, let's get the secret factors out of the way. There are only three. You get one for shooting Ghiaccio with R1, the other two for tripping him over two different times. 
He will skate around the car and occasionally ram it. You need to shoot him to knock him down so he falls further behind and has to waste time getting back to you. The best attack to use seems to be X with your stand off. You don't want to hold it too long as that will add more stand bullets to it. If all your stand bullets are out, the attack will be too weak to knock him over. He will start dodging attacks after the first time you trip him as well and gets a lot more aggressive as the stage progresses. Since you want to use the attack with the standoff, you will also have to aim yourself, and this itself is not the easiest task. I've tried multiple methods of using different types of attacks, but all the other ones seem to take too many hits to trip him over. Too many times he has gotten the last hit right at the end of the timer as well. You just have to get used to the terrible aiming. Overall, it took me over half an hour to beat this stupid 2 minute mission, and I can't imagine trying to do this without losing any health. After this, we have a more proper battle against White Album, though not without its own caveats. As you may know, White Album only really has one weakness, which is the hole in the back of his suit. And the game mimics this by making Gyacho only take damage if attacked from behind. You can beat him normally, but just like in the manga, we can employ a strategy that makes this fight go by a lot quicker, by following the secret factors. First two aren't related, but you can get one by using R1 on the lion statue next to where Gyacho spawns. If you break it with a different attack though, it won't count. As the battle goes on, Gyacho will start creating a mist around him which will deflect bullets back at you. Shoot it to get another secret factor. A ricochet shot is probably best to avoid getting hit with your own bullet. Now for the important ones. Shoot the lamppost so they bend. Eventually, a secret factor cutscene will play which will point out the spikes on the lampposts. Now you want to somehow push Gyacho back into the newly formed spikes. You kinda have to get a little lucky, position yourself behind the lamppost so when he dashes at you he goes past them. Then, time your shots well so you push him into the spike. Make sure he doesn't have the mist shield on though. If you do it successfully, he will take a lot of damage and you will be able to hit him a few extra times too. So we weren't able to see it last mission but Mista can actually do a melee attack if he's near the enemy. Try to get him stuck on the spikes as much as possible until we finish him off. It's good to sneak in some normal attacks to his back as well to make it go faster. You want to get him to dash towards you, which you can roll through and get in some hits yourself. He can be a bit annoying to fight, but this is nowhere near as bad as the previous stage. Jono makes sure to reward Mistar appropriately for his efforts in these fights, and also traumatizes Narancha. Stage 7-1 The gang makes it to the cathedral where Bucciolati confronts the boss they have been looking for. Once again you have to survive for the timer though, this time it's just one minute. The boss's attacks can be pretty crazy. He can teleport around and punch the columns to throw rocks at you. For the two secret factors in this stage, you can stand shoot the boss's stand King Crimson when you're nearby Trish, who's having a lovely snooze, and the other you get for stand shooting him when not near Trish. Overall, not too bad. Still crazy to do without getting hit, but surviving itself isn't too hard. After the one minute passes, Buchalati gets the full donut experience, and now we actually have to fight the boss. Like in Abakio's fight though, we only have to get rid of the light green part of the health bar, and the secret factors also happen automatically. The boss puts up quite the fight, but thankfully a few hits are enough to finish the stage. Buchalati brands himself a traitor, Fugo leaves, and Arancha realizes Trish is just like him, for real for real. Speaking of Trish, it's her big time to shine. The gang gets on a plane where they are attacked by Stand, Notorious B.I.G. Jono's hands get infected and everyone leaves Trish alone with the enemy. Trish starts with no stand. You have to get to the brute Jono left on the opposite side of the plane before you gain it and can actually fight the enemy. The enemy is attracted to sound, so make sure to tilt the stick slightly when moving to walk slowly. Attack one of the seats to unlock a secret factor and distract B.I.G for a short while. Keep doing this until you get the brooch which will unlock the secret factor and Trish's stand, Spice Girl. As for Trish's moves, X does a jump kick, Triangle is a stomp attack and R1 does a punch with your stand. If you stand on, X does a strong downward slap, Triangle makes Spice Girl attack the floor with a ball, and R1 is a wannabe stand barrage. The fight becomes very easy after you get the stand as you can use it to block B.I.G's attacks. For the other two secret factors, you want to use your stand shot on one of the seats, then use your triangle attack on the enemy with the stand on for the final one. Make sure to have a distraction ready for when you need to recharge your stand. Besides that, just whack him a few times and on to the next stage. This time you have to survive 2 minutes against a literal very notorious B.I.G. This one isn't the worst if you know what to do. He will slowly advance forward and you need to use your attacks to push him back. The best way seems to be to use your normal R1 stand shot 
with the standoff three times before backing away to avoid the sweep he does. You can also use R1 with the stand on. You will get thrown back if you do it, but your stand will block any damage. Once again, no secret factors to worry about, so we just hold out for two minutes and continue the story. The next chapter is just that. No gameplay, just some plot of the gang going to the island of Sardinia to discover the identity of the boss. They find a dead body, Abakio uses Moody Blues to see what happened, and then just dies, but not before leaving a clue to the boss's identity. We also get contacted by a mysterious person who asks to meet us in Rome, so we make our way to the next mission. On our way to the Colosseum, we get attacked by a dynamic duo of Seco and Chocolata in what is the other incredibly annoying stage. All you have to do is get to the end of the stage before you lose all your health. What makes this incredibly annoying is Seko's attacks are hard to avoid and he can jump out of almost anywhere without a warning. Getting hit often will also throw you back so far you will fall down to lower levels and have to climb the stage again. He will also just randomly grab you and teleport you to an earlier point, just because fu- you, I guess. To add insult to injury, Chocolata stand is also in effect which will cause you to lose health if you lose progress, as well as make your movement slower. Besides the first secret factor, which requires using a stand shot on Seko, all the others involve you breaking an object to create a shortcut. Although usually, these shortcuts would lead me through paths that will make it a lot easier to get hit, so eventually I just started running the normal path and getting the secret factors just for the health. Make sure to break the items with your own shots as they might not trigger otherwise. The spots are the crates at the beginning of the stage, the billboard that follows the stairs of the first shortcut and lastly this railing right here. My best advice is to take the normal path and learn the best timings for rolls. For some trial and error you will notice the spots he jumps out of so you can be ready for them but once you make it to the top you can safely continue in the knowledge that the worst has passed. Unless you get hit last second like I did. <laughs> Next up, we're back to a more classic style with Giorno. Chocolata Stand, Green Day, will spread this green mold which, if touched, will stick onto you and make you lose health for some time. You can trigger the secret factors by attacking Green Day itself and stand shooting Chocolata when he's in one piece and when he splits himself. The final one you get for using a fully charged stand shot to finish him off, which unfortunately I wasn't able to get. You have to be more careful in this fight with the mold being able to limit your moving space quite a bit, and it can be annoying when paired with his limbs spreading out to whoop your ass as well. After beating him we get the iconic 7 page Muda scene. follow up with another fight with Bucciolati versus Seco. The actual fight is not bad, but I found it very hard to trigger the secret factors here, with my best attempt being two out of the three available. Also, you need to do them in order. First one you get for stand shooting Seco when he's looking around for you. I still have no clue what is the best way to trigger it. I've read a guide that said to run away and stand still, I saw a video where he just stood still without running and managed to trigger it. I had it happen randomly once but cannot tell you why it worked exactly as when I was trying to zip away from him, he always knew where I was even when I was hiding on the ground. For the second secret factor, you need to hit a car until its tire pops off. And for the last one, you need to get the enemy to dive near a car to make the wheel pop off. That one is also tricky to get. I wasn't able to and did not want to go through trying to trigger the first secret action again for another attempt. Thankfully, the normal fight is simple enough not to need them and probably easier that way too. We force him into retirement and move on to the final set of missions with stage 11-1. The gang manages to meet up with the mysterious person who contacted them earlier, who turns out to be part Free's very own Polnareff. This leads us to a fight with the gang's boss, Diavolo. Just because we're almost done doesn't mean we don't have one more playable character to go over. All of Polnareff's attack use his stand, including the square attack with the stand on or off. His X does a vertical slice up, Triangle shoots out a sword that can bounce around, and R1 does a strong dash attack. When you stand on, your X does two slices with Silver Chariot, Triangle is exactly the same move as with the standoff, and R1 does a million split where he stabs the enemy multiple times. Also, instead of a dodge roll, he will do a dash forward with Circle. Another fun fact about Polnareff is that he is slightly challenged in the legs department, which means he cannot get up from the ground by himself without the help of his stand. Which means, if you are stand crushed and thrown to the ground, you will have to wait there lying on the ground while your stand bar refills. It's incredibly cruel, but thankfully this fight is not that hard. Just keep using your R1 stand shot with the standoff, and you can keep hitting him until the bright green part of his health bar depletes. For the secret factors, there are only two. One for stand shooting the Avalo, and the other one for shooting his stand. He does have some incredibly fast attacks and can slow down time for a few seconds again, but the R1 strat will make this easy. Next up is more story. The arrow gets taken by Silver Chariot, which evolves into its Requiem form. Everyone swaps bodies, then we have to stop Silver Chariot before he reaches the gate. Despite controlling the Evolve's model, you are actually playing as Bucciolati and have access to all of his normal abilities. Requiem walks slowly forward and you will get notifications for 10 meter increments as he advances. 
Unfortunately, he is also able to summon his own sticky fingers who acts independently. The best way is to slowly knock him back with strong attacks so he loses progress. If you can hit them at the same time, that also works. Again, not too bad of a mission, so just whittle his health down, then more story happens and we move on to the final mission of the game. 11-3 Jorno with his newly awakened Golden Experience Requiem versus Diavolo. Jorno's moveset is pretty much unchanged despite the new stand, except for his stand on X attack, now shooting a projectile. The other effect is that the stand is not affected by Diavolo's time ability, though Jorno himself still is. He does love to spam his time erasure ability, so you want to have your stand on for most of the time, and use the secret Joestar technique of running away when you need to recharge. For the secret factors, you get the first automatically at the start of the stage, you get another for using your X projectile attack, and the last one for not taking damage during his time erasure ability. Just keep your stand out and your R1 move charged up, then use it when he gets close to you during the slowdown. Rinse and repeat to take him down. He's very aggressive and will also heal slightly when you deplete his health bar for the first time, so try to be somewhat careful. In the end, Jorno beats Diavolo, forcing him into early retirement and completes his bizarre journey of corporate takeover. Diavolo gets probably the worst fate of any Jojo villain, being denied even rest in death. Meanwhile, Jorno shows his nails to some mafia dudes. The end. For finishing the game, you unlock another story mode, which lets you play most of the stages as one of four other characters from the game. This is a really great addition, as a lot of these characters did not get the time to shine. These fights also have their own points which contribute to the overall counter. There are no secret factors, so only the health at the end of the stage matters. The one-on-one -on -one battles are where this game shines the most in my opinion, so it's definitely something I can see people having fun with. But once again, they did Abakio dirty with this picture. I pretty much got everything I wanted out of this game already, so I wasn't too keen on doing all of these, especially when I knew I would not be able to get full score on some of the normal stages already. Also, 10,200 points would take a long time to get. I did download a complete save so I could show off all the extras you get for completing everything, so let's go to the gallery to check that out. First off is a pretty standard sound test, which includes the OST, voice clips and sound effects. The music in this game is alright. It doesn't have the nostalgia factor the Evangelion game I covered had, but it does the job. Next up is concept art for all the levels in the game. These are quite neat. You also have a model viewer with all the characters in the game. You can get them to do any animation, not just their own, which can be pretty entertaining. Next up is a stage test where you can explore the stages in the game without any enemies. You can't use your attack, so you can't use it to practice, but it's a nice addition. Annoyingly, the controls in the mirror world are still flipped though. Moving on to art collection. It's described as an in-depth look at Part 5's world, but it's really just some doodles of the main cast done by Araki. Then we have custom art. It's just two pieces of what looks like promo art. And lastly, we have the story drama. These are short stories that go over some of the fights that weren't included in the game's main plot in a comic book style. These consist of Mista's encounter with Rolling Stone, Stan user, fight on the boat we didn't get to go on, I too am very sad we didn't get torture dance, Mista's fight against Kraftwerk, Jorno's fight against Babyface, as well as Narancha's fight against Clash and Talking Head. It's a shame these weren't included as actual stages in the main game, but it's nice that they made these at least. And they are fully voiced too. That's about everything this game has to offer. It may not be the greatest game out there and definitely had a lot of moments that made me want to quit, but for what it's worth, I enjoyed going through it. I can imagine at the time this would have been a lot more exciting, getting to see these manga characters and events fully voiced in 3D and color. There's also a lot of replayability too, with the another story mode and 8 playable characters is not bad. The main game took me less than 5 hours to beat on medium difficulty, but if you want to put yourself through the pain of trying to 100% the game, that number will be a lot bigger. It is a very cool piece of Jojo history, but definitely not a must play unless you're a huge fan of Jojos. I would love to hear your thoughts on the game, so let me know in the comments whether you think it's worth playing or not. By the way, shoutouts to the guide for this game on Neo Seeker by Sunset Kid, which I have used to help me unlock the secret factors in this game. A useful resource if you want to play the game yourself. There is one more Jojo game on the PlayStation 2, which I hear is even worse than this one, so I'm excited to check it out, and we'll make a video on it after this. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it, and if you did, I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and leaving a like. Anyway, take care for now.